Good morning sisters and brothers. It has been a long time since we have gathered in this place like this and I am sure that some people didn't know that we had space for them so if you are hearing me you still have some time to get here we have space for you. As you have noted we have marked the locations where persons are to be seated so that we can observe the guidelines and so that we can keep each other safe from the COVID-19 coronavirus. We have also set up in the church hall, so if we have some more persons, um, there's a television screen in there as well, so that persons can be seated there and to benefit from this time of worship. I invite us to begin as we sing, This is Holy Ground. Standing on holy ground, for the Lord is here, and where he is, is holy. This is holy, holy ground, we're standing on holy ground.
indeed we are standing on holy ground and there are angels all around i invite you to share with me in the call to worship how shall we love the lord our god who has poured out such love upon us we shall love god with all our hearts mind souls and spirits how shall we demonstrate that love we shall live that love in all that we do think and say let our love be genuine and holy praise be to god who has loved us totally amen we worship god as we sing to god be the glory great things he hath done so loved he the world that he gave us his son who yielded his life an atonement for sin and opened the life gate that all may go in to god be the glory great things he has done so loved he the world that he gave us his son oh yeah and his life and that soul and for sin and open the life in the morning be seated as we offer to God our prayer of praise, adoration, and thanksgiving. To God be the glory. Great things he has done, so loved he the world that he gave us his son, who yielded his life an atonement for sin, and opened the life gate that all may go in 
So today we can say, Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Indeed, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice who come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory. Great things he has done. Loving God, you have allowed us to be gathered in this place once more. And so, Lord, we lift our hearts, we lift our voices. We lift our total beings in praise to you. We magnify you, great almighty God, omnipotent God, sovereign Lord. We bow our hearts and our lives before you. We use our total beings to express to you our gratitude for your goodness, your kindness, your tender mercies toward us. We magnify you, Lord. We praise your name because there is none like you. You are everything. You hold the whole world in your hands because you are God. We lift up your name today. We thank you, God, for your tender care. We thank you, God, for watching over us, especially in these difficult and trying times. We thank you for being with us in those moments when we were anxious and afraid. We thank you, God, for providing for us when the cupboards were going empty, when the pockets were empty. We thank you, God, for the doors you opened for us, for the showers of blessings that came our way. We thank you, God. Many people across this country today and across your world are lifting up your name in praise and adoration. Because, God, we have been brought to our knees recognizing that we could not help ourselves. And so we had to depend on you. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for accompanying those who are faced with real difficult times. We thank you for walking with those who face loss and grief. We thank you for those who have recovered from their illnesses. We thank you, O oh gracious God. We lift our hearts to you and ask that you make yourself known to us afresh today in this act of worship for those of us who are gathered here, those of us who are joining us by the world wide web, and those who are hearing the sounds from the outside. May your name be praised. May your name be honored. Help us to serve you as we ought. We ask this in your loving and precious name. Amen. We continue to worship God as we sing. Alleluia. Alleluia for the Lord God Almighty reigns. Alleluia. Holy, holy are you Lord God Almighty. Alleluia.
of reading from Psalm 66 verses 8 to 20 Psalm 66 8 to 20 Good morning brothers and sisters Good morning Our responsive psalm come to us this morning from Psalm 66 reading from verse 8 through to 20 Oh bless our God ye people and make the voice of his praise to be heard. Which holdeth our soul in life, and suffered not our feet to be moved. For thou, O God, hast proved us, thou hast tried us, as silver is tried. Thou broughtest us into the net, thou laidest affliction upon our loins. Thou hast caused men to ride over our heads. We went through and through water, but thou brought us out into a wealthy place. I will go into thy house with burnt offerings. I will pay thee my vows. Which my lips have uttered and my mouth has spoken when I was in trouble. I will offer unto thee burnt sacrifices of fatlings with the incense of rams. I will offer bullocks with goats. Come and hear all ye that fear God, and I will declare what he hath done for my soul. I, I cried unto him with, with my mouth, mouth and he was extolled with my tongue. tongue. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will hear me. But verily God hath heard me. He hath attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God, God which hath no turned away my prayer, nor his, his mercy, mercy from me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue in prayer. You may be seated as we sing, Search Me, O God, and Know My Heart.
Loving God, we know that we have sinned against you in many and varied ways. We have sinned against you on our own, and we have sinned against you as a part of community, part of the nation, a part of the world. Our actions do not always reflect what you require of us. Our lives are not always illuminated by your light. Instead of shining for you, sometimes we allow our light to be covered up. Instead of speaking for you and on your behalf, sometimes we remain silent. Instead of acting in the ways that you require of us, we're often led by our own interest, that which brings us pleasure and delight. And so, Lord, we ask you to forgive us. We ask you to forgive us, O oh Lord, for all the actions or the non-actions that would have made life better and more comfortable for others. We confess our inclination to be selfish and self-centered. We confess our acts of injustice towards others. O oh Lord, especially at this time, we hear of those who are suffering from stigma and discrimination. Maybe out of our own fear. But Lord, we pray that it help us how to have a heart of kindness and love towards others. How to be neighborly. Because that is what you require of us. We ask you to forgive us, God, for the times when we have acted in ways that were only motivated by selfishness. Unconcerned about the welfare and the well-being of others. those who have used their resources or their power in ways that are not in the best interest of the common good we ask your God to forgive us cleanse us from all inward sins and carnal weaknesses purify our thoughts our minds, our hearts and allow the beauty of Christ to be seen, to be experienced in us especially in these difficult and challenging times. May your love be evident in us, O Lord, as we reach out to others, as we become the source of help and hope and support for those who are most in need. We ask this in your loving and precious name, O Lord. Amen. Art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Give us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. 
and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Hear these words of assurance, sisters and brothers. Even in the midst of doubt and darkness, the light of God is shining in you, on you, and through you. Out of God's great love, you have been redeemed and made whole. Rejoice then, beloved people of God. We celebrate those words of assurance. As we sing, what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God. We serve what a mighty God. We serve angels bow before Him, heaven and earth adore Him. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we. Serve. Angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. One more time. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore Him. What a mighty God we serve. He's the King. Oh, He's the King of Kings, and He's the Lord of Lords. His name is Jesus. You may be seated, friends. I want to extend a very, very warm and special welcome to you. Over the months, I have not have been preaching to empty benches. A few of us have been coming here so that we can offer the online stream, the live stream, and we know that many people have been benefiting who are here, yes? So um, next week Sunday, please come and join us. And we have the hall. We have the benefit of a hall, right? Connected to us. And we have space there to accommodate as well. So I want to welcome all of you who have made it out today. I know many of you have been struggling, longing to see your sisters and brothers in Christ. And so at least you're able to see some of the faces today. So, welcome, welcome. Welcome to those who are joining us by the World Wide Web and those from the communities around who are joining us through the sound of the speakers on the outside. A very warm welcome to all of you. 
want to recognize those who are celebrating birthday this week. Um, I want to let you know, last week, Miss Elaine Young, one of our senior citizens, uh, one of our older members, she called me to say that last week was her birthday, and she marked her 89th birthday. So, I don't know if she's hearing us, or somebody can tell her that today we are remembering her in a special way, and when we sing the happy birthday song, we will remember her in a special way. Friday coming, Miss Bev will be having her birthday on Friday coming. Um, tomorrow is Dion Zone. You see, as if she didn't remember. I said, she's still sitting down at the back there. So Dion will be having her birthday tomorrow. Anybody else celebrating a birthday this week? All right, so let's sing happy birthday for those who are marking their birthday this week. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you, God bless you. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you, God bless you. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you, God bless you. Happy birthday. We want to wish all of you who are marking a special milestone in your life, those who are here and those who are at home or wherever you may be, you're marking your birthday this week. Please know that we are remembering you and we are wishing every blessing for you. Do we have any wedding anniversaries this week? Any couple celebrating their wedding anniversary? All right, we don't seem to have any here today. But if you are there, out there at home, please receive best wishes for us as you mark your milestone, your anniversary. May God continue to bless you. As you know, based on the conditions, um, the regular activities of the church have not been taking place. But I want to inform you, we have, some, we have a funeral that is coming up on Saturday. Um, Mr. Calvin Martin, he, his funeral will be on Saturday, right here at Bryce at 11 o'clock. Even though we can accommodate more persons for regular worship, when it comes on to funerals, the instructions still remain 10. So... We will not be able to have a gathering for the funeral, but I will see if our IT persons can do a live stream for us. This is the way in which we have been compensating for the funeral so that more people can benefit even though they can't be here. Um, I believe all of us by now have heard of the unexpected, untimely, sudden passing of Conroy Fritz, Con. And so we want to extend our deepest sympathy to his mother, Judy, his son, Kyle, and to the other members of the family. It's really a very, very difficult time, difficult news to come to grips with. And so I invite us to remember them in our prayers and to support them in the best ways that we can. Our tithes and offering will be received. Um, what we will do, you will just walk from your pews, and there are some uh, baskets here. We just invite you to just place your offering in the baskets. As we sing, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is a day that the Lord so the ushers will guide us so that we don't have any kind of bundling at the altar. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made. He has made me glad, he has made me glad, I 
will rejoice, for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice, for he has made me glad. I will enter his gate with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his I will enter his gate with giving in my heart. I will enter his court with prayer. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Let us stand as we give thanks to God. Loving God, we thank you for your manifold blessings that come to us each day. We thank you for these tithes and offering offered by your people. We ask your Lord to receive them, even to bless those that are on their way to us, but may not be physically here at this time. Bless the giving of your people, O God, and allow those gifts to be used in ways that advance your cause. Allow the ministry of your church to continue, even within these difficult and challenging times. We ask this in your loving and precious name. Amen. Amen. We're now going to have an item. Oh 
the infinite Father, faithfully loving your own. Here in our weakness you find us falling before your throne. Oh, we're falling before your throne. and Sean who we have not seen in a long time we are happy to have you and for you to share with us today let us listen to the word of God as it comes to us from Acts chapter 17 verses 22 to 31 after that reading we will share in the singing of the hymn in preparation for the spoken word O oh, for a closer walk with God, a calm and heavenly frame. A reading from the book of Acts of the Apostles, 17, verse 22 to 31. I will be reading from the New International Version. Paul then stood up in the meeting of the Areopagus and said, People of Athens, I see in every way you are very religious. For as I walked around and looked carefully at your objects of worship, I even found an altar with the inscription, To an unknown God. So you are ignorant of the very thing you worship, and this is what I am going to proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and the earth and does not live in temples built by human hands. And he is not served by human hands as if he needed anything, rather, he himself gives everyone life and breath and everything else. From one man, he made all the nations that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he marked out their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their lands. God did this so they would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from any one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As some of your own poets have said, we are his offspring. Therefore, since we are God's offspring, we should not think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image made by human design and skill. In the past, God overlooked such ignorance, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent. 
For he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he appointed. He has given proof of this to everyone by raising him from the dead. The Word of God. A calm and heavenly frame, a light to shine upon the road that leads me to the Lamb. Oh, for a so, so oh, walk with God, a calm and heavenly frame, a light to shine upon the road that leads me to the Blessedness I knew when first I saw the Lord. Where is the soul refreshing view of Jesus and His word? Return, O oh, oh. Of return, sweet messenger of rest. I hate the sins that make me mourn and drove me from my breast. Speak to us through your word. May we truly hear your voice, understand your heart, and respond to you with love and commitment. We ask this in your loving and precious name. Amen. These days, Many things are being said about God. About what is thought to be the doing or the action of God. The COVID-19 coronavirus has led to much interpretations of scripture, understandings of what God is doing or not doing, thoughts about God and church. What is clear is that God has been the subject of many conversations in these days. Many people have wrestled 
with the sins of God. Many have called out to God or turned to God in this time of crisis as they recognized that human beings could not save them from the onslaught of the COVID-19 coronavirus. Many have turned away from their idols, the idols in their lives, the things they worship, or the things that have occupied their time and attention, the time that belongs to God. Many have turned to reading of scriptures. Many have turned to listening songs and hymns of hope and assurance. Many have turned to stories of faith. I have found Acts chapter 17, verses 22 to 31. One of the lectionary readings assigned for today. To be a significant reminder to us. To be a challenge to us in these times. Paul was on his missionary journey which took him to Athens. And while he was in Athens, he observed and was deeply distressed by the many idols that were on display. The images people were worshipping. The city of Athens was full of them. And so Paul engaged those who attended the synagogue in conversation. A group of Epicurean and Stoic philosophers, the great thinkers of the day, the brightest minds given to reason, began to engage Paul in a debate about the Christian faith that Paul was teaching or advocating. Paul was making significant inroads in spreading the gospel. The Christian faith that Paul was teaching was the subject of conversation for men were the people of Athens worshipping a God that they did not know. And that's the, the argument that Paul raised with them. You are worshipping a God but you do not know him. COVID-19 has highlighted how religious some people are. But it seems also to highlight the ignorance of the faith, the ignorance of the religion. How lacking people are in knowledge, true knowledge of God and the Christian faith. So there have been some very interesting religious expressions around this time. They have been interesting Bible teaching. Some very interesting theological positions on how the mind is to cause bad word. The anger that was coming out of the preacher. I couldn't understand it. In the meeting of the council of magistrates. Paul said some things about God that are insightful for us today. As we wrestle with the times in which we live and to make sense of our faith. Clearly, we must not be like the people of Athens. We must know the God we are serving. And we can know this God through what we call natural revelation. Just by observing creation. Just by observing how people live and how people move and how people experience life. We can understand God through the way people experience life across the globe. We can know God through the proper interpretation of the sacred scriptures. 
We can know God through the leading of God's Holy Spirit. We can know and experience God through the tradition of the church. There are ways, there are ways in which God makes himself known to us. So what insights did Paul have to offer about this so-called unknown God of whom the people of Athens spoke? Paul wanted them as well as us to know that this God who they classified as unknown he is the God to be worshipped. He is a God to be given honor and praise. Why? Paul is arguing a case to them that this God is sovereign. This God stands above everyone and everything. This God, said Paul, is the creator of the world and everything. He is the Lord of the earth and the heaven. In verse 25 of Acts chapter 17, Paul declared, he himself, speaking about God, gives everyone life and breath and, breath and everything else. He continued by saying, from one man, he made all the nations that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he marked out their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their lands. Paul is arguing that even though you have some images that you call God, none of them could do this. None of them could give life. None of them could give breath. None of them could create everything. None of them could mark out the history of human beings. None of them could set boundaries in the lands. So he's opening their eyes to see that this God that they claim to be unknown is the God who does all those things and therefore he is sovereign. COVID-19 has caused many of us to come to the reality. Or it has served as a reminder that we are not in control. This virus that we can't see but we're afraid of has caused us to recognize that we can get to that place where we are out of our depths. We just seem to be watching the world getting out of control and we are struggling to stop it. It is clear that we may be powerful, but we are not all powerful. It is clear that we have knowledge, but we do not know everything. It is clear that we may have plans, but we can't implement them. It is clear that we may have resources, but we can't access them. Indeed, there is one who stands above us all, who is sovereign. Paul says it is in him that we live and that we move and that we have our being. In other words, without him we cannot exist. That's the point that Paul is making to these bright people in Athens. They are philosophers. They are thinkers. They are people of high reasoning. And Paul is helping them to come to understand that as bright as they were, there are some things that they did not know. Imagine it. You are in the midst of philosophers. You are in the midst of magistrates. But they are saying that there is a God that they did not know. What a paradox. You are in the, the belly of knowledge, philosophers. You are in the belly of great thinkers. And they are confessing 
that there is a God that they did not know. Because he's sovereign. Because he stands outside of us and beyond us. He cannot be contained or he cannot be limited to space and time. So Paul declared to the learned philosophers and the magistrates that the Lord of heaven and earth does not live in temples built by human hands. In other words, you can't confine this God, and you are right to say there's an unknown God. You can't confine this God to these idols that you have. He says that this God is not served by human hands as if he is needing anything. Sometimes, out, thank God for the internet. Thank God for social media. Thank God for public address systems. I know that the physical separation has had a toll on many of us. We miss seeing and interacting with our brothers and sisters. And yes, that's one of the purposes of the church. Fellowship. The coming together that helps us to be our best selves. It's an important need of human beings. Social interaction and the church provides that space. But think about it. If God were only present in church buildings, what would have happened to our faith over these months? We would have had none left. Wherever God, God's people are, whether in church or at home or on the street or in the farm, God is there. And it is for that reason why our church, the United Church, made a weekly provision of a liturgy, an order of service for home worship. Some of you may have seen it that we have been sending out each week to, for people to use in homes as they worship because we could not come together in this sanctuary. I came upon a clip recently, and I suspect some of you saw it. It depicts a conversation between Satan and God. And Satan was bragging how he closed the churches. And that God said to him, and I have started one in every home. You saw it? Satan will say, I closed all the churches. And God said to Satan, and I started one in every home. <laughs> Friends, we can't limit God to building. Even though they carry significant meaning for us. Let us remember that the early church scattered as a result of persecution, grew more. In other words, when the church was not able to gather, it grew more because people took the faith wherever they went. Before COVID-19, as a denomination, and right here at Bryce, I've been having conversation with Leron about how in this modern world, we must use the technology to advance the gospel in more significant ways. Two weeks ago, we had the funeral for Richard Tomlinson here. And only ten people could gather. But when I watched the YouTube channel, I saw that over 3,000 views, over 3,000 views for that service. For most, for the time that we have been apart, when you go on our YouTube channel, 
in terms of the number of people who are instruments that had clicked, we were having like 400 people or instruments. In other words, the technology that is available to us under the circumstances of COVID-19, when we are locked down, we are able to reach many poor people than we would have normally met or reached while we're here. So last week, we had a meeting of the ministers of this council, lay pastors, some of our other chairpersons, Leron was in that meeting, Mrs. Bonner was in the meeting, um, an online meeting. So we were all over different places in the same meeting. I was here in the meeting, I'm not sure where Leron was, where Mrs. Bonner was a suspect at home, but we were at various places, but we were in the same meeting, seeing each other for the most part, talking with each other. And one of our ministers challenged us that in this day and age, we have to widen our understanding of the church. We must see the church as a gathered church. We must see the church as a home church. And we must see the church as the digital church. Meaning, we have to see the church as a church online. It is said you should never waste a good crisis. And COVID-19 is a crisis that is creating opportunities. So I had already started a conversation with Leron to say, how can I do Bible study maybe at Bryce, but Pike is connecting same time and Robbins Hall is connecting same time. And they can talk back to me and I'm talking to them. We are coming with it. Some of our people can't come out at nights. How can they stay at home and still connect? Mrs. Bonner shared with us that the Sunday when I did communion here, when only ten of us were here, it was the first time in two years that her mother was able to take communion at home. So God, the God we serve, is not confined to these walls, but this God is everywhere. And through the opportunities that come to us today, it may be ten of us here, but we are many more than ten right across the globe. So Paul wanted these friends in Athens to understand that this God is sovereign. And because this God is sovereign, this God is to be served. He defended the Christian faith before these great thinkers in Athens. Speaking of the actions of God. And he said God did this so that they would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him. Though he is not far from any one of us. For in him we live. And move and have our being. As some of our own poets he said have said. We are his offspring. The appropriate response that human beings ought to make to this sovereign God. Is to seek after him is to reach out to him. Though he is sovereign, though he stands above everything, though he stands above everyone, he actually is not far from us. We can reach him easily because it is in him that we live and move and have our being or our existence. In other words, this sovereign God that the Athenians did not know, this God was active in their lives even though they did not recognize him. And today, that same God is active in the lives of all people across the globe even though some people do not even recognize him. He's right there. In him we live and move and have our being. We are his offspring. We really belong to him. And so Paul said, therefore, since we are God's offspring, we should not think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image made of human design and skill. In the past, he said, God overlooked such ignorance, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent. 
For he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed. He has given proof of this to everyone by raising him from the dead. In this season, sisters and brothers, in the lesson that is beckoning to us at this time through this word, our appropriate response is to serve the sovereign Lord. That's what Paul is saying. And that this service begins with repentance. It begins with putting away the things in our lives that have occupied the place that belongs to God. It begins by asking God's forgiveness to forgive us for giving the attention that he should get to other things and maybe other people, idols. COVID-19 is a wake-up call. A call for us to return to God. Let us give to God the worship. Let us give God the homage. Let us give God the praise that God deserves because he is the only sovereign one. Let's turn away from the things that have taken hold of us. The gold, the silver, the stone, the things, the people. And let us turn to God. In that hymn we sung earlier on, Oh, for a closer walk with God, in one verse we talk about the idols, tearing down the idols so that we may give to God what God deserves. So, in this time, the unknown God to the Athenians is the God we are to worship, the sovereign Lord, the one we are to serve. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we look to God in prayer, we sing, be still and know that I am God. I am the Lord that healeth thee. And in the old Lord, I put my trust. Be still and know that I am
loving God, we turn to you once more. We recognize, Lord, that for many in the world, you have been relegated to the unknown God. For many years, many have pursued life on their own, feeling self-sufficient, feeling all-powerful, all-knowing, having everything to the tip of our fingers. But Lord, in this time, our grounds have become shaken. We have been faced with all kinds of uncertainties. Some of us have been brought to the consciousness that you are God and God alone. You are the sovereign Lord. So many things we thought we had under control. But Lord, we have watched them fleeting from us. And we cannot control them. The things that we're accustomed to, that we were comfortable with, so many of those things are no longer there. We recognize that it is not us alone, but that you are God. We can't manage on our own, on our own strength. For anyone, Lord, here today, connecting in this service, to bring you into close relationship with them so that no longer you are the unknown God, but you are the God who they know intimately and dearly. We pray, O oh Lord, for those who are struggling to exercise faith in you because life has become so uncertain. We ask you, Lord, to reach out to them those who are struggling to make sense of all that is going on. We ask you, Lord, to reach out and to settle them, we pray. We pray for those who are in need, in need of food and shelter, those who are in need of money because they have lost their jobs. O oh, loving God, you are the great provider. You own everything. You have made everything, and so we turn to you on their behalf. Jehovah Jireh, our provider, reach out to those who are in need, we pray. We pray, Lord, for those who have lost loved ones, those who are pained by the reality that not only have they lost their loved ones, but they are not able to share in that final rite, that funeral activity or experience because they're not able to travel. And so Lord, these circumstances have compounded the grief and so we ask you Lord to reach out to those who are in such situations and comfort their hearts, we pray. We thank you for the resources that you have blessed us with so that through the technology of the day, we are able to still share the gospel and to bring people into faith. We thank you, O oh gracious God. We pray for our government, our opposition. We pray for, pray for the governments of the world, all those who have to be making critical decisions as we deal with the impact of the COVID-19 coronavirus. Grant wisdom as we manage this crisis, O oh Lord. A special way we continue to lift up those who face this crisis each day. Our health practitioners, doctors and nurses and other staff at hospitals and clinics, those who work with the elderly in homes, we pray especially for them. Those who work in the labs, O oh, loving God, protect them from harm and danger, we pray. Watch over them. Pray for their families who experience anxiety as well. 
who at the end of the day to whom they go. Watch over them, we pray. Lord, we know that as difficult as things may seem or be, the world remains in your hands. In your hands, Lord. We are therefore surrendering all. So take charge, we pray. And lead the way. Renew our faith in you. And grant us victory on the other side. We ask this in your loving and precious name. Amen. Amen. Sisters and brothers, we bring this act of worship to a close. As we sing the hymn, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. Tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing call for songs of loudest praise. Let us stand together. Come thou fount of every blessing. Tune my heart to sing thy praise. Streams of mercy never ceasing call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me song, melodious song, and song my flame in tongues above. Praise His name, I'm fixed upon it. Name of God, redeeming love. Is the good I love has blessed me. Thou hast brought me to this place. And I know thy hand will bring me safely home by the good grace. Jesus caught me when a stranger, wandering from the fall of God. He to rescue me from danger, for me with the special to grace our greater debtor, daily and constrained to be. Let thy goodness, like a pleasure, bind my wandering heart to be. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to live the God I love. Here's my heart, so take and seal it. Save it for thy ports above. May the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest remain and abide with us, God's people everywhere, this day and forevermore. Amen. 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 I want to wish you a wonderful week. Encourage us to follow, continue to follow our.